1998 Ducati 900SSCR. The closest thing we're going to do that will let us experience the song of the sausage creature. My thighs hug this Ducati, a sweet bike from 1998. Oh, I can't wait to go. Look at this thing. This motorcycle is a derivative of the Ducati 900 SS SP that Hunter S. Thompson wrote about in his article, The Song of the Sausage Creature. Now, he had the SS SP and this is the SS CR. What's the difference? Not much. CR in this instance stands for Cafe Racer. Ducati just made an alternate version of the SS SP. They just cut down the fairing and said, here you go, here's a Cafe Racer. It's the same bike bike, just less fairing. From around 91 until 1998, the 900 SS came either with a full fairing, which was designated the SP, or a half fairing, which is designated the SSCR. For the uninitiated, a fairing is a shell placed over the frame of a motorcycle to decrease the amount of air drag that drags against a bike. Because when you think about it, motorcycles have a lot of hard edges, stuff sticking out, you have throttle cables dangling around. There's a lot of places is for the air to get hung up. So if you can smooth the bike over, you're doing great. Smoothing over the rider, that's a different matter though. So while it seems like an aesthetic addition, a fairing does serve its purpose, particularly when you're riding it on the highway. And in the case of this 900 SSCR, you're going to feel more wind around your legs. But you would feel a lot of wind around your legs anyway, because this is a very narrow motorcycle and there's not much place to tuck in your legs like on something larger, like a Yamaha R1. It's also my first time seeing the Ducati 900 Super Sport in real life. And the first thing I noticed was how small it is. This 900cc motorcycle is only about the size of a Kawasaki Ninja 300, but with an engine three times the size. And I know we spend a lot of time on cars, but my heart for motors began with motorcycles. And this is also the first chance I got to ride an Italian bike. Ducati is an Italian brand and it's hot. Ooh, and thick with musky savagery stemming from German loathing. BMW wants this bike dead. And if there were a four-wheeled race, they'd probably get their way. Ducati has a Congress-sized target on its back because rival motorcycle manufacturers see it as the usurper. No matter how advanced German and Japanese bikes get, when you say Ducati, oh, oh, oh. With the 900 Super Sport, you're getting an icon of two-wheeled supremacy. Even though it's only two valves per cylinder, you want this. This bike is what happens when the kids have the house to themselves for the weekend. You get speed. You get sex. You get irresponsibility. It's a bike that screams, hey, ride me in my gym shorts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ride me in sandals. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't need your gear, no. The 900 Super Sport is the girl that insists you can raw dog her because she's on birth control. She's lying, and you know she's lying. But the key is already in the ignition. Here's the thing. Just like that seventh wine cooler on prob night, it seems like a good idea. But you don't know what you're in for unless you gather up some information on what it is you're straddling. So let's dig in. This motorcycle is only one of 200 imported into the United States in this color. 200 red and 200 yellow. That was it. Mm -hmm. This has a 904 cubic centimeter, single overhead cam, two valve, Desmo 90 degree V-twin engine with a six speed gearbox, chain drive, and a power rating of about 80 horsepower at 7,500 RPM. I know 900 cc motorcycles these days are making well over 100, but once again, you got to remember this is the 90s. Anything getting above 75 is considered insane. And it's insane to hear this thing start and run. It sounds like the engine is falling apart. When you start it, you hear this. And you're thinking, what on earth is wrong? Oh, there's something wrong with this bike. Uh, that That's not a normal sound. Nope, that's a normal sound. That's how Ducatis sound. What you're hearing is a dry clutch. Most motorcycles have wet clutches. They're, they're, 
their the clutch plates and everything sit in the same oil that the engine runs in. It seems weird, right? And I know there's people who are really in the cars who know nothing about bikes, and that's okay. And you think, well, why, why would the clutch sit in oil? How on earth does that work? Well, most cars use engine oil with friction modifiers. Motorcycles can't use that. Traditionally, all motorcycles that use wet clutches, which is every single beginner bike under the sun, use a wet clutch. Now, you can only put motorcycle-specific oil in there because it doesn't have the extra friction modifiers that car oil does. If you put car oil into a motorcycle, it's going to run weird, it's not going to like it, and your clutch is going to slip a little bit. Now, I know people argue on forums about, oh, you can put car oil in the... Look, just go to the store and buy the stuff that says motorcycle on it, you'll be fine. But this Ducati has a dry clutch, like a car. That's why the clutch housing here is open. Now, the Ducati 900 Super Sports didn't come like this. This was something done by the previous owner. And you can see it. There it is. There's the clutch moving around, making a racket. The big BMW Touring bikes have dry clutches too, but because they're German, they don't make that sound. They engineered it out. So when you're idling on a 900 SS, the bike hates you. If there's anything this bike hates more, it's traffic and side streets. It does not want to go slow. It will buck. It will shake. It a Ducati one wants to be up in the mid-range all the time. Preferably mid to high, but way above three grand. And someone can explain to me why this is, because I can't figure it out. Maybe it's the gearing, but the gearing feels the same as my old Suzuki GS500. That was a 487cc motorcycle, and that was fine with me short shifting it. This has an engine almost twice the size, it's also dual carbureted, and it hates to be short shifted. And it's not even carrying the same amount of weight, and it's a more advanced machine. Anyway, all you want to do is lean over on this. The good doctor was right. This is a very balanced machine because it unbalances the rider. When you ride this motorcycle, you are tilted way forward. The pegs are really tiny, and that gas tank just punches your taint all the time. Oh, it's like someone took a pool noodle and dipped it in plaster of Paris and just wails on your nutsack. Until you get on the throttle. Once you get on the throttle, then suddenly everything smooths out, and the bike likes you for about three seconds, and then the whole engine goes football riot crazy. But you're trying to go, and you're trying to see where you're going, and your neck is held back, and your shoulders are low, and your wrists are in pain, and your sperm are abused, and then you stop to compose yourself and then the clutch starts making that noise again and it feels like it's about to spin off the bike and roll down the street like a nut like it's a 1970s ugh, car action movie so 1998 late 90s this bike wasn't even involved in the japanese speed wars it was outside of it and when you look at it it seems immune to the other things that were going on in 1998 the yankees were the world champions and so were the broncos and so were the red wings and we lost frank sinatra phil hartman and sonny bono and the president got his jimmy john around the same time George Michael got pegged in a bathroom. But it's easy to dismiss 1998 as the anti-1994 because it's easier that way. It's easy to ignore the birth of the MP3, the release of Stunt by Bare Naked Ladies, or the radio dominance of Jumper, or the rise of Ben Folds 5. We could pretend that Resident Evil 2 never happened, and with it, Metal Gear Solid, Xeno Gears, Grim Fandango, Ocarina of Time, or Half-Life 1, or Star Wars Rogue Squadron, or Mario Party. But that would make pussies of every last one one of us, because we'd be denying the truth for an easier fiction, that it wasn't part of the total understanding of what motorcycles are, where they come from, and why they're important. But all that's bull. Ralph Nader should have focused his attention on this thing. This is unsafe at any speed. But that's what always attracted me to motorcycles. The danger. The immediate danger. The incredible seriousness that you are doing something that will kill you. The only thing that's saving me on these Jersey roads is my own wits. A Japanese motorcycle will let you experience the high speed and high thrills of life while maintaining a sense of order and decency, but not the Ducati 900 Super Sport. This bike rattles and shakes and thrills you like a roller coaster that hasn't met a safety inspection. The 900 SS is far more thrilling than any Hayabusa could be. This is a weird reference, but I'm pulling out Bicentennial Man, and I'm saying perfection lies in imperfection. The Ducati 900 SSCR is messed up. It's an imperfect bike. If you require perfection, you're gonna have a bad time on this machine, but you're also gonna miss out on life, because perfection only exists on paper. The 900 SS has that spirit of think you're you're hammering this machine out in your parents garage with your bare hands and shaping it into something beautiful and functional that's where perfection rests it's a hands-on love of creation the ss it has two valves for us 900
hundred cc, a rolling warrior from 98, a nice V twin engine and dry clutch. It's like the kid I knew from my hometown, Charlie Brown. I'm always gonna worry about the things that could give us. Great.